Today I'm going to show you 10 essential tools for setting up a home recording studio. Let's get started. A common question that I get is what does it take to set up a home recording studio? Wolf. Now there are a number of ways to approach a home studio. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna share what works for me. But first, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. What's going on? Hey, what's up Andrew? This episode, we're gonna be looking into uh, home recording studios. So I was wondering if you can sort of share um, how you create your music at home. Um, so I can show you here, majority of my setup is right here on my computer. That's the, the brain for everything and how it works. I run FL Studio 12. Um, here's one of my projects here that I've been working on the last couple of days. This has been one of the most simple programs that I've used, I've tried with Ableton, I've tried Logic, and this I think in my opinion is probably the easiest setup for me in terms of just putting new sounds in, using VSTs, just dragging different um, sounds from sound packs, drum packs, whatever it is, into a track and you can have something quick and easy super fast. Uh, I have a, another monitor here that I like to use. Makes it a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more focused on whatever project I have versus my, uh, my just my laptop screen. So that's been pretty helpful. Probably the most important thing besides the laptop would be uh, some great speakers, as you can see here. They're Dahlquist, they're older ones. Are you using a Mac or a PC? Uh, I have a PC that runs Windows 10 right now. I know if I was on a desktop, there's no way that I would be able to function because it, it just it has to go with me everywhere. How do you interface with the software? Uh, I use this uh, Nectar Impact LX61. Pretty simple, just your standard keyboard with a few mixer faders, some knobs and some, uh, some beat pads there. Um, I used to have, uh, I'll show you my old one here. This one goes for a hundred bucks. You can see it's uh, it's it's used, it's gotten its wear and tear. But this is just 25 keys. A hundred bucks has all the same, all the same things. But I mean, at the same time, it's still really sturdy. Has lasted me a long time, and you can make great music with it. And do you also have the ability with FL Studio, if you were in a crunch and you didn't have um, an input device like a MIDI keyboard, could you actually create beats just with the keyboard of your laptop? 100%, that's what I did for probably a year to a year and a half. I would just write chords with, you know, the letters on my keyboard, like you said. You can link it to to drums and you can, you know, play beats out with it just on your keyboard. You don't even need to spend extra money for, for an actual music musical keyboard. You can use the one you have right on your laptop. I'd love to hear a little bit of music. This is a, uh, a remix I have been doing um, by Porter Robinson and Maddie on Shelter. So uh, let me play you just a, a quick tidbit of this. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Dude, that's really cool, man. I love Porter Robinson, one of my favorite artists, so uh, a chance to use one of his vocals is really, really cool. So basically you got the vocal stems for this project and then you yes. started working on creating music around it, is that right? That's right, so I just used, um, I used primarily uh, Serum, which is a, a really popular VST for electronic music uh, for hip-hop. I'm doing this through a, um, a website called Splice, a rent-to-own program. I pay like 10 bucks a month instead of paying a flat like two, three hundred bucks. And when you pay it off, you get to own it. I, I've been loving, loving Serum. Do you have any go-to YouTube channels that you use as a resource or online channels that you've used that you'd like to recommend? Uh, Busy Works Beats. Uh, he does a lot of hip hop beats and stuff on YouTube, a lot of tutorials, he has tons and tons of videos. Echo Soundworks and uh, ADSR is another great one. ADSR is a website that does a lot of um, samples, uh, presets for Serum, for Massive, a bunch of other uh, VSTs. Where can people go to hear your music? 
Uh, they can go on SoundCloud. Um, my uh, my URL is soundcloud.com slash Drew Makes Music. Um, go check it out. Uh, I'll have this uh, Shelter remix up there you can uh, listen to um, and drop a like. I hope you enjoyed the Drew interview. I added his links and suggestions down below. Now I'm going to show you my 10 essential tools for recording at home. It's about time. Yeehaw. Number one, laptop computer. Number two, digital audio workstation. Number three, audio interface. Number four, microphone or instrument. Number five, input device. Number six, headphones. Number seven, reflection filter. Number eight, cables and stands. Number nine, external storage. And number 10, educational resources. First tool I recommend is a laptop computer. This is a MacBook Pro, and it's the brains of the operation. Number two, what you got there? I recommend getting a DAW, a digital audio workstation. The DAW that I use is actually called Logic Pro. And if you get a MacBook Pro, GarageBand comes standard on it, and Logic is essentially the upgraded version, the professional version of GarageBand. So that's a great place to start. Essential tool number three, an audio interface. I use the Apollo Twin. This allows me to plug in two instruments, record two instruments at a time. However, I rarely do that. I essentially only use one. So that's my primary audio interface. So I can plug in a keyboard to that, an analog synth, awesome. or a guitar. So you can plug an electric guitar directly into it and use the software synths on your computer. Or you can actually mic your amplifier. Now you're talking. And uh, run the mic cable into the digital audio workstation. Number four, microphone. What you got there? This is a large studio condenser microphone. This is made by Neumann. Ooh. There's a ton of different options out there. Uh, this one sounds great on vocals and acoustic guitar. I've got a number of other microphones. But when you get a microphone, you're gonna want this pop filter, which um, eliminates or helps to eliminate plosives. When you make a P sound, it can give a rush of air and create an explosion sound in the microphone, which is not pleasing. Number five, an input device for your software synths in your computer software. Now I'm using an Akai here. I also have another keyboard that's a little bit more mobile, which is this guy over here. And I'll include links to all of these components down below the video. Number six, headphones. As you see here, I've got a pair of Audio Technicas. These are great. They've Stay away from headphones that artificially boost or enhance frequencies. So for example, Beats by Dr. Dre, they give you a lot of bass. They sound great. They're great for leisure listening, okay. but when you're mixing a song, um, you're gonna turn the bass way down because you're gonna hear a lot of bass when you're listening to those headphones. Then you get in your car and you won't hear any bass. So try to find studio headphones that have a very even frequency response. And then number seven, a reflection filter. That's this thing that's around the microphone. Ooh. And it absorbs some of the ambient sound of the room and makes it sound like um, you're in an isolation booth. So I definitely recommend getting one of those. The reflection filter can be put on a mic stand like I've got it here. Number eight, cables and stands. We've got some guitar cables, some microphone cables over there. You'll want stands for your microphone like we have here. Nine, storage. Talk about storage, I mean external storage devices like these lacy hard drives. When you're working with music files, they're huge, and um, the more songs you write, the more memory it takes up. And you don't want those hanging out on your laptop computer, so get an external hard drive and put all your projects on them. That way, it leaves your horsepower of your computer focused on processing the actual software. Number 10, educational resources. I'm gonna show you a couple websites to check out and I'll have their links below this video. Number one is Pensado's Place. You can go to pensadosplace.tv or check them out on YouTube. On YouTube, just search for Pensado's Place. Great tutorials, great interviews, all about music production, mixing, mastering, etc. The next one is The Recording Revolution. Check out Graham Cochran, it's his site. He shows you how to record at home and create music 
music, answers a ton of cool questions, and he's really talented. Another one I'd recommend, Dr. Mix. Dr. Mix does uh, mixing and mastering services online. However, if you check his blog and social media sites, he gives tons of great tips for music production. Lynda.com is a great resource for learning different software platforms, learning all kinds of stuff. And YouTube, obviously, is a great resource as well. Hope these tips were helpful, and don't forget to like and subscribe. As you continue to explore your own beautiful musical creations, remember that music is an expression of one's soul. I almost forgot. I need to give shout outs to the first five people who subscribed to my YouTube channel after my last vlog post. All right, I got a few people I'd like to thank. Uh, the subscribers since last week's vlog, the first five of them. One, Lynn, aloha Lynn. What's happening? You are. Oh. Number two, Rye Welch. Hey Ryan, thanks for subscribing. I'm looking forward to having you on the show. Ryan is an amazing composer, a musician, and a mentor of mine. Ah, Daniel Derrico. What up, D? Daniel's another one. He's one to look out for. He's an emerging artist. artist. He's got an amazing voice and a great songwriter. We've collaborated on a few things. So thanks for subscribing, Daniel. Number four, Becky Masuga. Um, Becky is a uh, talented creative designer, and I have something here to show you. What is it? A shameless plug. Becky is one half of Peppermint Narwhal. Ooh. Peppermint Narwhal is a design firm, so if you need graphics, graphic design, stuff for advertising, etc., they do it. And this book is actually out right now on Target.com. Check out Zoo Flakes. They do these awesome designs of animals in the shape of snowflakes. What the what? Number five, Christian Ellis. Thank you for subscribing, Christian. Christian's an amazing drummer, another great songwriter, and also a barista at one of my favorite haunts here in Middleburg, Virginia, Common Grounds. Yummy. You'll see it on the show. I'm there all the time. So thanks for liking and subscribing, guys. Let's get to it. Check the hair here. Oh yeah, looks like Chris has. What a wicked thing to oh. do. Sounds pretty good so far.